Hello everybody and welcome back to Southern Fried Crime, the true crime channel with the country twist. If you're new here, please remember to like, subscribe, and click on the little bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. New videos post on Mondays. Thank you so much for listening and now on with today's case. Francine Moran was born August the 17th, 1947, in Stockbridge, Michigan. Her mom named her after a French musician, and her father was an abusive alcoholic and was often known to be on his wife and children. Francine often wondered why her mother would put up with that treatment with, from her father. Her mother always told her, you do what is best for your husband. When Francine was 16 years old, she left high school to marry a man named Mickey Hughes. They had four children together. Mickey was an abusive husband who was much like Francine's father. He would hit Francine and leave bruises all over her body. Francine did what her mother never had the courage to do. She left Mickey after 13 years in her abusive marriage. Their divorce was finalized in April 1971. Just after their divorce was finalized, Mickey was in a serious car accident in the summer. He moved back in with Francine, however. She said she was reluctant to let him move back into the home, but she felt she could not refuse him because she did not want him to be hurt more than he already had been. Once recovered, Mickey continued to abuse her. Francine couldn't leave because she was afraid he would kill her or their children. He would regularly beat on her and their children. He destroyed furniture, and he even killed their daughter's kitten. Eventually, Francine obtained her GED, and in 1976, she enrolled in a secretarial course so that she could have some independence from Mickey. The morning of March 9th, 1977 started like many days did for Francine. She got up and made breakfast for her children before sending them off to school. She then went off to her secretarial class. When Francine came home from her class, Mickey was drunk and in a fighting mood. He would not let her make food for the children and he began to beat her like he had so many times before. Mickey kept hitting on her and he began to berate her for dropping out of high school years before. He forced her to burn her school books before he hit her on the head and forced her to go back to her bedroom where he repeatedly raped her for hours. The cops came to see what was going on, but once again they refused to take him to jail. Francine tried once again to make something for her children to eat, but Mickey got mad because she didn't ask him so he dumped everything she made on the floor and made Francine get down on her hands and knees to clean it all up. Once Francine got the kitchen cleaned up, Mickey dumped the trash can on the floor again and made her clean it up again. He kept hitting her until she said she would quit school. He then forced her to cook dinner for the whole family. After making dinner, he took Francine back to the bedroom where he once again raped her and after that fell into a drunken stupor. Francine was waiting for her youngest child to come home, but for whatever reason her son didn't come home, so she decided that she was going to burn the house down to prevent Mickey from hurting her ever again. She told her children to put on their coats and wait in the car. She poured gas all around Mickey and the bed. Then she struck a single match and lit Mickey and the bedroom on fire. The fire consumed the home and killed Mickey. Francine then took herself and the children to the police station so that she could confess to killing her husband. Francine was tried in Lansing, Michigan on one charge of murder. The prosecution did not have much of a case because of the way Mickey had acted in the past and the numerous times that they had been to the house. Francine was found not guilty by reason of temporary insanity. 
And this was the first successful case that used a battered woman's defense. Francine's life was much happier once the trial was behind her. She was able to move on with her life. In 1980, she married a man named Robert Wilson, who happened to be a country and western singer. She went to school and earned her degree as an LPN, where she worked for many years in nursing homes. Francine eventually retired, but would sit with elderly people and would occasionally teach a nursing class. She died on March the 22nd, 2017, of complications from pneumonia that she had contracted in late 2016. If the story of Francine sounds familiar to you, that is because it was made into a book and later a made-for-TV movie called The Burning Bed, starring Farrah Fawcett and Paul Lamatt as Francine and Mickey Hughes. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the case of Francine. If you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, please contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. Once again, the number to the National Demo Domestic Violence Hotline is one 800 799 That's it. Bye-bye for now.